Hey there, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website, then you should definitely check out Squarespace and more on that later. This video is gonna be all about monitor calibration. I wanna first talk about why you might wanna calibrate your monitor and I'm gonna show you how to do it because it's really not that complicated. So I've been putting off calibrating my monitor for several years and I'm kind of embarrassed by it at this point and I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. I probably was either lazy, I didn't wanna spend the money on a calibration tool or I thought my monitor was accurate enough because I, I spent a good amount of money on it. So maybe that's, you're in one of those categories or maybe several of those categories. So why do you wanna calibrate a monitor? Well, first of all, if you're doing video and photo editing, we wanted to make sure that what we're seeing on our screen is actually accurate. I know that seems pretty basic and most people understand that, but when you are sending, let's say, video files out over the web for people to look at on multiple devices, phones, tablets, computers, none of those are gonna be color accurate, so they're all gonna shift in some way. So what we need to do is make sure that what we're creating is as neutral and accurate as possible. So again, if you're doing video or photo, this is gonna to apply to both of those. So if you're trying to create really neutral, accurate images, then of course you want it to be neutral and accurate what you're looking at. But also if you're creating artistic grades, you wanna make sure that what you are seeing and creating on your screen is what other people are gonna see as well. So this gives us the best chance of putting out an image that's gonna be kind of in the middle of the whole spectrum of monitors and displays that are not gonna be as color accurate. So it's really important to do that. All right, let's talk about how to calibrate it. So you're gonna need a tool. I picked up this guy here. This is the Data Color Spider X Pro. I picked this up with my own money. Uh, it was $170 usually, and it was on sale for 100, so I decided to pick it up then. They also make the Spider X Elite, which has more features, but I basically wanna calibrate my main monitor here because this is the one that I'm doing all of the color work on, and I wanna make sure that what I'm seeing here is accurate. So. Let's talk about how to do that because I think it's a lot more simple than a lot of people make it out to be and a couple things that maybe you're just interested in how the process goes, so let's go over that. So first of all, this device here has two pieces and uh, this is where the sensor is here and this is the cap but also acts as a, a weight when you hang it on front of the monitor and this is just a USB cable that plugs into my computer, it's already plugged into my computer. So a couple things we need to do here is we need to um, check a couple things in the computer. So if we go to the system settings and we go to display here, I have my monitor here. This is a 32 inch BenQ 4K monitor. I bought this monitor a couple years ago and when I was looking for a monitor, I did a bunch of research and this one seemed to have good reviews and be fairly color accurate and all that kind of stuff. If you're curious about all the, my whole setup here in my studio, I made a whole detailed video about that. So I'll leave that video linked down below if you're curious about all the gear I use. But this is the monitor I've been using. So you can see here the BenQ 3200, PD 3200U. I'm not saying you have to buy this monitor, I'm just showing you the monitor that I have. And if you go under color profile, what you can do is you can select all these different profiles. And if I click something else, you'll see that it changes the colors on the screen. So we wanna make sure that we start with the BenQ settings here. So let's go through and we're gonna open up the Spider X software, which I already have installed. Okay and I've already registered this and everything, so we should be good to go. I've actually gone through the, the um, calibration process already, so I, I know how this works. Okay, so there's a couple settings in here that you wanna take a look at. It tells you what to do. Make sure the monitor's warmed up. Yes, this monitor's been on all day. Lighting conditions, uh, make sure there's no intense light falling directly on the screen. So this is really important. When you are editing photos or video, you wanna keep the light off of the screen because you don't want that to influence the brightness, the contrast, the colors, all that kind of stuff. Also, where you're editing makes a big difference too. In my studio here, I have all the windows uh, darkened out so there's no natural light coming in. I use uh, studio lights that are fairly close to daylight balance and I face the lights away from the screen. I also keep it kind of dark in here when I'm editing. It's obviously much brighter in here now than it normally would be because I am have to light for this that I'm talking to you right now. Also, it's helpful if you paint your walls a neutral color. So they make really expensive paint that's like over $100 a gallon. I went to Benjamin Moore and brought my gray cards and talked to the paint person there and they picked out a color for me that had very little um, other pigments in it. So it was as neutral as possible. I forget the paint color, but just paint it fairly neutral gray and that way any light that gets reflected, it's not gonna influence the color that you see on the screen. So again, these are the little things, uh, but generally I keep it fairly dark in here while I'm editing. So that's the first thing. Display controls, so reset the monitor. So let's do that. So if you are using a monitor like this, there's gonna be a menu on here. So I'm gonna go through and quickly reset the screen here. And the reason for that is we wanna make sure that whatever is going on on the screen, we wanna make sure we start over. So I'm gonna reset the screen. 
All right, screen is reset. So we should be good to go here. Okay, now plug in the spider. We already did that, so I'm gonna hit next. So here we're gonna choose uh, the kind of backlight that we have on our screen. It selected wide LED for us. If, you, if you're not sure which one it is, make sure you go look it up for your monitor and make sure you select the right one. And there's different options here. We are gonna do uh, recalibrate, or you can check your calibration or do a full calcula uh, calibration. We do a full calibration, it doesn't take that long. And then under here, we're gonna click on change settings. So these are the target settings here, but we're gonna go through here. So um, what I'm gonna do here is, you know, we're gonna use the recommended settings for gamma and the white point of 6500 Kelvin, because those are the recommended ones. I'm not gonna mess around with that. For the brightness, I'm gonna adjust the brightness of the screen and you can actually use the color checker here to change, to get make sure the brightness is set where it should be. So the other thing here is that you can have the spider, it's got a sensor on the back here, read the light in the room and figure out how bright your monitor should be. So I'm not gonna do that for this situation, you can do that, but generally I'm gonna set it to where it should be because right now it's way brighter in here than it should be. So we're gonna leave the room light off, but we're gonna adjust the brightness. So we're gonna to go to next. So it gives you a message here, okay. It's gonna adjust the brightness. So we're gonna hang this over the screen. So again, this is where the sensor is. This is kind of a weight that goes on the back and then you can adjust the length of how long it does to hang down here by sliding this up and down. So we're gonna put this over the back of the screen here. And it's a little bit long. So it takes a little bit of finessing here. Now, one thing about my screen is that it has this bezel on the top, and so it keeps it away from the screen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna lean the screen back a little bit so that the Spider X sits right there on the screen. So we moved it back, now it's sitting there. We should be uh, pretty good. Let's hit next. And when it's doing this right here, it's just checking the brightness. So it's gonna go through a couple of the colors and just hang out for a minute. And after we're done with this, you can adjust the brightness on the screen. Okay, so basically the target is 120 and the software says you should aim from 80 to 120 to get really good color grading and stuff. That's the sort of range. But right now it's reading 201. So we need to lower the brightness. Now, if you have a Apple display, then you can just press the, you know, the brightness buttons on there. And if you wanna make um, more accurate adjustments because it's kind of coarse. You can press option shift and uh, the, the brightness buttons and it'll give you finer adjustments. But for this, I'm gonna use the monitor. So we're gonna turn down the brightness and after you make an adjustment, you have to hit the update button. So I was at 20 something, now I'm at 154. We're gonna go down to 120, we're gonna keep going down. Every time you adjust, you have to hit update again. So it just takes a minute to get this dialed in. There we go. So now we're at 120, so that's good. And we're gonna hit continue. Okay, so now it got the white point and it's gonna go through and do all the color calibration. It goes through a whole different cycle here and uh, it'll be calibrated when it's done. So it's done, it says measuring complete, remove your spider and click finish. Now that the software is done calibrating the monitor, you should go ahead and build that website that you've been putting off for years, just like you've been putting off monitor calibration for years. So let me take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace, because it's a great place to build a website. Now, if you are a content creator, a creative, or a small business owner, you need a website, believe me, you really do. And I'm really excited to have Squarespace sponsor this video because I've personally been using Squarespace for years. Now your website can be as simple as a landing spot for people to find your contact info and social media, but it's a great place to show off your photos, videos, portfolio, artwork, etc. They even let you host videos directly. No need to link a YouTube or Vimeo video and it looks a lot more professional and seamless. It's simple to set up a website with their amazing templates. They make it super easy and anyone can do it pretty quickly. They have lots of other cool stuff like the ability to set up an online store, schedule appointments, or have member areas. You should definitely have it over squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash josh satin 
Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Link in description. So after that calibration, it's it created a new profile that we can select in the settings menu. So it's defaulted here as BenQ PD 3200U-1. So I'm just gonna change this to something I can remember. Let's at, say like spider and then put the date in here so you can remember to, you know, when you did this and I'm gonna hit save. You can also uh, have a calibration reminder. I'll just turn that off for now. But what is, this is gonna save this into your profile so you can access this in the settings. So this screen here is interesting because it gives you a chance to sort of see what the calibration did. So if I push uh, the zoom in here, you can look at these four images. These are just some sample images and a color chart. And if you, this is the calibrated view. If you hit switch, that shows you what it was like before, and this is after. So it changes not only what's in the menu here, but the whole screen. And to my eyes, it looks like the uncalibrated look was a little bit cooler. It's now a little bit warmer. So we have this all set up. We have our monitor calibrated. And you can check out some other cool stuff in here. Uh, don't really need to talk about that. But anyways, now the monitor's calibrated, I'm gonna hit quit. Now that this is all done and it saved the profile into your computer, if you go into the display settings and you click on color profile, you can see you have the option of the one that we just created and also the original one. So this is the calibrated one. If I click on the other one, it'll change. So you can see it looks a little bit different if I go back and forth. And this is really interesting to me because, you know, I've stared at this monitor for so many hours a week for several years, and you get used to whatever your monitor looks like. And so now when I put the calibrated profile in here, it looks weird to me. And that's just, I've just gotten accustomed to the way the monitor looks. So it's important to have the monitor be as accurate as possible. We put a lot of time and effort into our color grading and photo editing. We wanna make sure that it's accurate so that what we get here is going out in the world and has the best shot of looking good on several monitors. Anyways, I wanna share this experience with you because I think for 100 bucks or just over 100 bucks, it's a great thing to have and you can do multiple monitors uh, in, your, in your office or in your studio as well. So I'll leave a link down below if you're looking to pick one up. Again, the, this video is not sponsored by SpiderX, but it is sponsored by Squarespace. So thanks again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this. If you enjoyed this, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.